What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. It's kind of the monkey paw effect right now because I was begging for no for more news, right? I said, man, it's dry out here. I'll take any news. Bad news, good news, just the news. Monkey paw effect, we're getting news. Um, and it's definitely not good. So Xbox has announced that they are closing Arcane Austin, Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog Games, and Roundhouse Games. Um, well, Roundhouse Games is affected, but it's going to be absorbed um, by Elder Scroll Online team, Zenimax Online Studios. So the year of layoffs and shutdowns continue. I actually thought it might have been over, at least major stuff. I, you know, I thought little sprinkles and uh, of layoffs and shutdowns would be here and there, but I honestly thought like it might have been over at the beginning of the year. We thought, thought we were done. Um, but no. So first, all you people who were pom poming ac acquisitions, I hate you. Because you didn't you weren't really concerned about like the the betterment and the health of the gaming industry and the games uh themselves. You just wanted to, you know, um have ammo for your fanboy wars and and your list wars and shit like that. You make me sick, right? And here's the thing. I was for Xbox acquiring Bethesda, right? The reason I was for it, the reason I was pro Xbox and Bethesda was because prior to Xbox buying Bethesda, Bethesda was in bad shape. Their games weren't selling poorly. You know, they had I know they had some financial trouble, um, but their games were, weren't selling very well. Like Every one of their sequels sold less than the last one. Like it was, it was bad for them. Aside from their, you know, their main, you know, maybe like the Fallout's and the Elder Scrolls, which don't come out super often. All their other games were suffering. We're talking about Evil Within, uh, Dishonored, Wolfenstein. All of them were just on a downward tra trajectory and all that. And I'm, I'm fan of those games. I'm not fan of like Fallout and, and Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. But I really love Wolfenstein. I loved uh, Dishonored. Loved Evil Within. So those are the games from them that I personally care about. So I was like, okay, Xbox is coming in to save them. So I'm all for this. Because that's what I care about. If an acquisition happens, it is my belief, and I've always said this, the purpose of an acquisition should be for the publisher to provide the uh, the one being the, the entity being acquired with the with whatever they need to be better, to improve, to take the next level, to save them if they are on possibly the cusp of being shut down or if they're not able to make the games that they've been making any longer, right? That's the purpose. You have to make them better in some type of way. You have to improve them. That That is the purpose. Otherwise, why do it, right? I know some of you think, oh, just be, some of you are happy just for an acquisition um, for your preferred platform. I, you have to make them better. If they don't become better under a publisher, they might as well have stayed independent. Because the publisher is supposed to provide them with whatever they need, manpower, money, who, what, you know, um, things that weren't accessible to them before. That is the purpose, to make them better. That's why I was for it. But now, for example, Tango Gameworks, which makes uh, Evil Within, and then most recently, um, Hi-Fi Rush also, they're gone. It's over. And, and uh, Sh Shimagami, uh, what's his name? He, he left. I always butcher these, you know, these Japanese um, uh, developers names. Um, but y'all know who I'm talking about. I might have butchered his name. I said Shimagami. That's that's the name of a video game. Y'all know who the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, dude, right? I, I, I'll Google his name in, in a second. Y'all got to forgive me. Japanese developers. I always fucking butcher y'all name. Every single one of y'all. But they're gone. So that acquisition for me personally is now pointless. I'm getting nothing out of this. Ar and Arcane, and here's the thing, right? I keep the same energy. 
when a developer isn't holding their weight, isn't performing, you absolutely need to shut them down, right? Because I tell people all, all the all the time with um uh with like Japan Studios, with Sony and and anybody else that they shut down. I'm like, bro, they weren't selling games. They weren't selling. They they weren't making good games. Listen, I'm still waiting for Media Molecule to be shut down. I think pe- people like were confused at my obsession with like media with my hate for Media Molecule. People are finally coming around and kind of understanding. Like, bro, I kind of get it. Like, how is Media Molecule still around, and all these other developers are getting shut down? It's very confusing. They obviously have somebody at Media Molecule has dirty pictures at somebody very high up at at Sony. It's Shinji Mikami, right? Is is that it? Shinji Mikami. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about some goddamn. I called this man a video game. Uh, I was about to say Shimagami Tensei or some shit like that. Uh, but he left like last year or two years ago. Um, and that was a bad sign because he was like the brain behind behind uh, that that studio. And bro, it's like the more people people love to talk about how much money Microsoft is making. I peeped a while ago and I said this, the more money they ma- the more money Microsoft makes, the worse Xbox gets. Because any objective, I think, Xbox fan will admit the best era of Xbox was the 360, and it's only gotten worse from then. And even with the, I think you can argue, even with the Xbox One, it still wasn't as bad as now. So they they didn't open up, Microsoft didn't open up that, that wallet. Satya Nadella didn't open up that wallet until, what was that, like, uh, very early... It was like a little bit before this generation started, but it was going into this generation, you know, when they made all the acquisitions. Um, It was like 2018, 19, around that time when they were like, listen, we're going to open up the checkbook. We're going to buy studios and all that stuff. Give this gaming division money. And ever since they gave the gaming division money, it's been nothing but bad shit. It's been negative shit. It's been bad decisions at least from the perspective of the Xbox gamer or gamers in general. People were pom-poming and doing backflips in the street because, oh, you acquired uh, Bethesda, but then, you know, the big one was you acquired Activision Blizzard. Oh, yeah, they they were so freaking happy about that. And all of this shit has just really... It hasn't produced anything to warrant all the hype it got. This acquisition has not p- produced the fruit for all all a, a, as big of a deal as it was. Yeah, the the, the what we got from it do, doesn't doesn't match. It does not match, bro. And it, it it's it's so funny because like when you tell Xbox fans um the, the false prophets, y'all know who they are, right? They're out there preaching about engagement numbers, um, all, you know, all the shit that they say doesn't matter anymore and does matter. And y'all got people to fall for that bullshit and that propaganda telling us, oh, it's not about sales. It's about engagement numbers and all that shit. Then why are, why why do all these goddamn studios with these, that they that with these braggadocious engagement numbers, why are they getting shut down? If those engagement numbers mean so goddamn much, why why is why is this getting shut down? And some games with high sales get shut down too for other reasons. I'm not saying they don't, but if y'all f- really believe that oh these engagement numbers mean something, and we've been telling y'all, bro, stop falling for these engagement numbers. Oh, you're just a hater. Oh, you're just a pony. No, anybody with common sense can see that th- these are just inflated numbers that mean nothing. I got flack for saying, bro, these engagement numbers don't mean shit. With Starfield, with Hi-Fi Rush, with whatever it is, these engagement numbers mean shit. Because 
there's a story behind them that they're not telling you. Okay, 20 million people play Starfield. Okay. How many people beat the game? How many people... How many of that 20 million, how many people, I don't know, got past the, the start menu? Because as soon as you boot up the game and press start, you're a player. So the actual interest in the game and the actual investment in the game, in any of these games, an engagement number won't tell you that. Well, you know, you know how many like get there, bro. People know uh, Rogue Company. People know I played that game Rogue Company, which is absolutely dead now. Right. That multiplayer game. If you look up how many players that game had or has, and I'm not talking about concurrent numbers, I'm talking about total people that ever play the game. It's huge. It's huge. But when you look deeper. At the actual amount of players who were playing it after a while, it was very low. So. The total numbers of people who ever played it don't mean nothing if nobody's playing it right now. And then on top of that, you add Game Pass into the mix. Game Pass uh, pretty much... Game Pass adds a whole bunch of smoke and mirrors and illusions to, to, to inflate player interest. Because it's not really telling you... Somebody buying a game is a and shelling out sixty seventy dollars is a bigger conviction than someone subscribing to something and and just playing it. See, when I buy a movie, if I if I literally like go to Amazon um, Prime and literally purchase a movie, that shows that I'm more interested in this movie more than if I if it's just one of those random free movies in the Amazon Prime catalog. It's two different type of moves. One shows a direct interest and investment in something. The other shows, yeah, I'm interested in it, but it's not the same. It's, it's not the same. There's levels to this. As our, as our, as, as our brother Doc Dark says, it's not, it's, it's not the same level. So all that into the mix, you know, Xbox started changing the definitions of things, changing the definition of success. Even by their metric of success, they're now still failing. By their metric, they, they changed the metrics of, of success that, that we always abided by to a new metric. And now they stay failing at that. We saw those game pass numbers. You're, you're, you're failing at that. That's not growing. Engagement numbers, you're failing at that because you're shutting down studios. Bro, how much, how, how much, how much y'all gonna give Phil Spencer, bro? How much leeway y'all gonna give this man? Just how much rope y'all gonna give him? Because he's hanging y'all right now. It's just, it's bad, bro. It, it, it's bad. Because as the publisher that makes the most money, which is what people brag about so much, they should be the ones. And I'm not saying even the the ones with the most money don't have to make some of these decisions, but you would expect this type of stuff from them the least. You would expect them to produce the most and shut down and close the least. And it's just been... It's all not it's it's not been worth it. It's clearly not been worth it, bro. And this doesn't mean that like of course PlayStation and Sony has their own problems. That's a different topic. Nobody's saying that they don't. But God, like, bruh. The the ex the it's like a year ago, you know, I wasn't subscribing to the whole Xbox is vanishing and slowly going away. You know, I always thought look at that looked at that as honestly just just fanboy discourse and you know, just bullshit, you know. I never really subscribed to it. Bro, this shit is real. With all the moves they've been making, it's like that meme. Well, I forgot what them dudes were that, you know, that they always made the videos with the dude he would like dis just you know, do the peace sign and just disappear slowly. That's Xbox, just slowly disappearing. Slowly disappearing, you know, the Xbox brand slowly going away. They're like 
what what does Xbox do to make their fans happy? What have they done in a long time to actually make their fans happy, bro? I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. It's been a lo- very long stint of just unhappy Xbox fans. And I'm really only upset about like Tango Gameworks. You know, the other stuff sucks. But I, because I care about Dishonored, Wolfenstein, and um, Evil Within. Now, to me, it's like, it's not a guarantee if we get any of those. Nothing's a guarantee. And then you had people, you had people, right, when when Xbox makes all these acquisitions, there, you had people like, oh, we're going to get this, and we're going to get this, and we're, they're going to they're gonna bring back all the legacy IPs. They're going to they're gonna bring back dorm, are you, and, and I was looking at it like, y'all are dumb as fuck. Like, yeah, I expected them to keep going with current IPs some some recent shit and continuum some of you mofos was talking about oh they're 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 gonna they're gonna bring back negro infamous that's what i call it um because i can never remember the name of that shit because i never uh i never actually actually played it uh what was that shit called prototype y'all thinking they gonna bring back prototype and they gonna bring back this and they gonna bring back that Bro, they can't even get their 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 most important shit in order, their biggest titles in order. And you talking about they're gonna bring back some obscure, random game that probably ain't even gonna sell? Banjo Kazooie? Are y'all? Oh yeah, yeah. So none of y'all can buy it. So it could just fail in Game Pass, and they could brag about engagement numbers again, and and it don't do nothing. Y'all thought Game Pass was really the savior? It ain't. It ain't. Shout out to all the Xbox false prophets that have been selling y'all false dreams and hopes and selling y'all lies. Uh, And um, yeah. Man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let me know what y'all think about this. I will catch y'all on the next video. I mean, at least Arcane is still open by the way it's just arcane austin specifically shutting down and they're the ones behind um uh redfall so them you could say they definitely be- deserve that if this was only arcane austin man i don't even i don't even care i don't even care but like just all of it together bro it's it's bad hit the like button follow me on twitter hit the notification bell all that good stuff catch y'all on the next one i'm out peace